this massive document dump that's taking place because of these incredible lawsuits against Monsanto that are already awarding billions of dollars to those who have been, who have uh, contracted um, um, uh, cancer from uh, glyphosate, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, that was the word I was looking for, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma from glyphosate, thousands more lined up. Well, in this document dump, we now have found that there was another person singled out. This time, not the doctors that, like Merck, when they said, we will hunt doctors down and destroy them where we live. They weren't going after doctors. They weren't going after reporters like Terry Gillum. This time, the focus of Monsanto, the person that they had to stop, was none other than a mom? Take a look at this. Newly released emails reveal how agri-chemical giant Monsanto attempted to discredit an action group campaigning against its weed killer. Moms across America had raised the alarm over the use of one of the company's leading products called Roundup. Well, in 2013, the action group sent an open letter to, to Monsanto's top management calling on them to stop selling GMO seeds and spraying crops with glyphosate and other pesticides. That's your enemy. Beat the shit out of them and put them on the defensive and you won't have this problem. I have been arguing for a week to beat the shit out of them and I have clearly lost. We don't want to be seen as beating up on mothers. Nobody will listen to it anyway. It has to be done by third parties. What one mom can do, I am joined here in studio with Zen Honeycutt, who you've been on, you've Skyped in before, we've been talking to you, the great work you've done with moms across America. Um, when did you find out that there was actually a direct discussion, literally fairly violent languaging? I mean, when we're talking yes. about, like one of the discussions right now in these movements is the violence that's taking mm -hmm. place or violent statements bringing people to anger, those are very violent statements, beat the blank out of her or them. Yes, yeah. Um, when did you find out uh, about these statements? I believe it was a couple weeks ago, and we did a press release, put it out, and Environmental Working Group picked it up and many other outlets since then. And, you know, originally when this was happening in 2013, when I wrote this letter, it, it, it made sense to me when I saw these words because that was when the targeting on my family and myself started. Um, and we weren't public about it at the time. We wanted to focus on joining into Fourth of July parades, which is what, why we sent the letter, and, um, and to raise awareness about GMOs and toxins. But now I'm glad that this is out because it shows the corporate mentality of arrogance and aggression, misogyny, and complete disregard for public health. And this is very important for people to know, especially our politicians, our policymakers, and our president, who are currently trying to allow these corporations to self-determine whether or not their products are safe. This is a very dangerous situation for America because clearly, by looking at these emails, they don't put our public health at the first and foremost. They are not interested in our health. They're interested in growing their profits. When you say, you know, attacks on your family or that your family, what do you mean by that? Because, I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, they ask me, do you feel safe? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what, what was happening? Well, it was first it was online attacks, you know, threats and, and um, threats that they would attack us phys physically. And uh, there were incidences that happened, like being sprayed by a helicopter with weed killer that I don't know was connected to them but could be. You know, there were attacks on my husband's job, things like that. He eventually lost his job. So there were things that were could be connected, that I, but I don't know for sure. Right. But what I do know is that four months later, Sofia Gattaca, a mother in Argentina who had four of her children get sick from living near a GMO chemical farm, her fourth child died as, as a baby. And so she went after Monsanto in, in order to stop the factory that was being built there. And she was physically beaten. And so to me, these words are, you know, these emails are not just words. This is a mentality of, of entitledness that these corporations have, that they will do whatever it takes. And that has shown up. I, I know many activists in America that have experienced, uh, you know, online attacks and, and threats. Um, but what's most important is that we keep going. Right. You know, that we do not let fear interfere with our commitment. Right. And I love your call to action to be brave. Yeah. Because no matter what they do, we need to continue to put food safety and medical safety and our health freedom first and foremost. 
because without health, we have nothing. We don't have a strong military. We don't have a strong government. Right. We don't have a future. We don't have politicians that are making good choices to stop climate change. Health must come first. So many people ask me to tell what, what should I do? What am I supposed to do? You know, um, you know, I don't know. You're, you weren't a journalist as, as per se before this all happened. Mm -hmm. Um, what makes a mom, and, and sort of tell me about this action that really, when they talk about this letter, mm -hmm. you know, what was the inspiration and sort of what was your process to deciding this is what I'm going to do? Well, when my children got sick, I knew I had to do something because this, it was just not normal what was going on. And I researched, I found about GMOs and toxins. I got involved in the Prop 37 labeling campaign at the time. And when that failed, I realized it, it was not enough. And it was not enough to be angry. You know, we're not going to be effective just by being angry. We need to take action. So I, I chose to take on leadership. I said, okay, I'm not going to wait for somebody else to do something about this. I'm going to be the one to transform the food supply. Not me by myself, clearly. <laughs> we'll take right. a lot of people. But I decided not to wait for Pam or Ronnie or somebody else to do something about right. this, right, that I would take action. So I asked myself, how can I raise awareness with as many people as possible in the shortest amount of time? And for me, the answer was joining into 4th of July parades, where you can reach thousands locally and millions nationally mm -hmm. in a single day. And so we did that. And that having an event and an opportunity for people to join into that was affordable and family friendly and accessible was a big hit. We, we started to reach over 300,000 a week on social media wow. in just four months. And we reach millions a month now. And people are empowered. They come to our website. They get, they get uh, flyers like these, you know, they can yeah. pass them out to their city council and their representatives, and they have a professional presentation, and they can take action. And that's what I'm most excited about, is people taking action. It, even, even though this mess of a pharmaceutical industry and food industry is happening, mm -hmm. people are getting involved in taking action, and, and that is very exciting. Things are changing. Here, let me grab my computer, because I, I mean, I just, I want to know what it's like to read some of these comments that were made in these emails. Um, you know, here they're saying, uh, you two more than anyone have picked up the fight. We won't fight. Ron Kleiman had pretty much the same advice. I love this. By the way, a minor glyphosate tolerance increase petition on specialty crops got 10,821 negative public comments in the last 48 hours. Not form letters, individually written comments, mm -hmm. not a typo either. That's the correct tally for EPA. I love this. We are on the way to be a corporate roadkill. It will not be a pretty sight, but all I can do is stand by and watch. At one point, uh, they even argue that there's more funding coming from the anti-GMOs than from Monsanto itself, which is such an insane statement. They're literally complaining that we're being outspent, which I know that's insane. That's not true. We had a few thousand dollars to start the first parades. And, and like they imply in the emails that I was, the, the letter that I wrote to Monsanto, just simply asking them to change direction, yeah. to, to go in a direction with not selling poison to our, you know, to our country. <laughs> um, they, they said that that was funded by the organic industry. And I want to be clear, I was a volunteer for three and a half years yeah. and was not funded by the organic industry to write that letter. I don't need to be paid to speak up for the safety of my children. What did it feel like to read, though, that they were referencing themselves as being roadkill because the work you've done? You had to gloat a little they, bit. They got that right, at least. <laughs> Monsanto had to sell out to Bear, and, and those the men in that uh, email list, one of them is a pediatrician yeah. that worked for Monsanto. So it's appalling that he wrote those words. And the other two are from trusted universities, the University of Illinois and the U University of Georgia. So uh, yeah, it's, it, was, it was appalling are to read that. Are these people still employed at those schools? I think, the, I think Bruce Chassie and Wayne Parrott are, still are. And the interesting thing is that Bruce Chassie received $57,000 from Monsanto, did not declare it, came through the channels of the University of Illinois. So uh, something to be aware of when you're choosing universities for your, your children. It sure seems to me that we should. We should start, you know, we vote with our dollars. We vote mm -hmm. with our choices. Those are the mm -hmm. most powerful statements we can make. If there are people that are using this type of language about a woman, about a mother, about you know um, citizens in this country, mm -hmm. then we should think twice about funding anything that surrounds those people. And, I, and I, I'll be honest, I'm shocked. 
Monsanto, these lawsuits, billions of dollars, we now know they knew that this project, you know, this product. Yeah, that's the important is, thing. Is At that time, death. they had scientific studies to show that their products right. caused tumors in rats. Right. They knew exactly what was going on. They referenced child health as an issue. They knew that child health was an issue for us and for the public, and they continued to not label their products and to not stop and make testing, you know, have testing happen. Um, but, you know, in a way, I have to thank these men for these the emails because, yeah. and the plaintiffs and the lawyers that sued Monsanto, because since then we've had an overwhelming amount of support. Volunteers are coming out to volunteer. People are raising money for us and donating. And so these three men behaving badly have actually, the result is that women are rising up and taking on, taking on power and empowering themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and for that, I think that's another reason why they didn't want to look at as being seen as beating up on moms because they know when moms are confronted, we only get stronger. That's right. And, and that's what's happening. That's what I'd love for your viewers to take, take from this, is yeah. to, to be strong, to be yourself, to be brave, to keep going no matter what. No matter what happens, do not let fear interfere with your commitment. And I know that every person that's watching out there, your show, is committed to health. They're committed to freedom. They're committed to safety. So we just need to keep doing that. You no, know, and if we don't, who is? I mean, the EPA right. clearly right. isn't doing it. The FDA is not doing it. CDC is not doing it. Our right. own government is actually siding with these industries, as you pointed out. Right. I mean, do you find it as shocking as I do that industries in America knowingly kill American citizens at numbers that rival, you know, the Vietnam War? I mean, when we look at opioids, you know, 60, 70,000 a year are dying from this opioid yeah. epidemic. We knew they knew it was addictive. We knew they knew there was a problem. Merck killed, you know, arguably over 100,000 people knowingly with a product. These are numbers more than we lost soldiers in the Vietnam War. People marched in the streets to stop that war. Uh, how are these companies allowed to still work in this country? How, you know, and I always say, if we're saying that corporations are people, why is no one going to jail for murder? I mean, these people yeah. are knowingly murdering not one, not ten, like tens of thousands of American citizens every year. So I asked the EPA that about Roundup when we found it in glyphosate. I said, how can you not re recall this product? When a seat belt doesn't work or a car seat doesn't work, you recall it because it doesn't do, it's not doing what the manufacturer said it would do. And, and they said, well, we have to assess, assess the benefit versus the cost. And I said, okay, so let's say a chemical is killing birds when the manufacturer said it wouldn't. What does that mean? Do you go out and count dead birds? They said, yes. And I said, so that means there's collateral. There's a certain number of acceptable deaths. Right. And the question is, what is the number of acceptable deaths of our children? Yeah. And, and the EPA staffer just said, well, we have a difference of opinion. A difference of opinion what? On what that number is? How about, exactly. how about tell us what the number is? Let's right. start there. Let's I, start I say there. the same thing with yeah. vaccines. We know we're killing children. Yeah. So what is the number? Oh, well, we don't really have data on that. And it leads to, it's not only what is the number, but what are your calculations? How are you getting your data? How are you collecting that data? How yes. are you finding the amount of dead birds? You know, are you right. looking in one area? Are you looking where birds even live? You know what I mean? Right. So these are the types of problems we really, we are really, I think, com are coming to a head. And I think that that's the beauty of this story. That fact that you're sitting here, you're standing here, you didn't disappear. <laughs> they didn't, you know, you know, you yeah. and your family are strong. Yes. You are stronger you know, than ever. You yeah. acted on your intuition. Mm -hmm. You did what you felt was right, which is all I can tell people to do. I can't lead you. I can't hand you your marching orders. I think we're all being given marching orders from something much bigger than ourselves. Yes. Yeah. We've got to move forward. But look at what you've achieved. I mean, really, it's 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 awe-inspiring. And I, you know, I'm really glad you could come in studio Thank to you. show other people simple actions and mm -hmm. truth yeah. are so incredibly damaging to the evil that's going on, especially in all the things that revolve around the health of our children and ourselves uh, on this planet. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of work to do. Our government is absolutely, I think, more than asleep at the wheel. I think they're working against us. Yeah, well, but if we keep coming from love, we have an yeah. unlimited source of, of inspiration and motivation. They have a lot of money, yes, but it's, it is finite. You know, we have an unlimited source and we have support from fathers and sisters and brothers and ch our children. They're an incredible resource. So, you know, we just need to keep going and we yeah. just need to keep exposing the truth. I love that your, your hashtag, you know, the truth lives here. Yeah. And, and we need to keep going and doing this and, and not give up 
and not sink into despair and not sink into victimhood. This is about keeping the food supply safe, keeping uh, pharmaceuticals safe, having our children be safe, and, and we can do, and we are, there's huge wins. General Mills just this past week announced that their, the farmers in their sustainability program will no longer be allowed to spray glyphosate as a drying agent on the grains. Wow, this fantastic. is one of the largest food companies in the world. Yeah. And so they are listening to consumers and they get it. And I guarantee you behind closed doors, the pharmaceutical companies are looking at how can they get glyphosate weed killer out of vaccines. Right. I'm, I'm sure they're looking at that. They won't make it public, yeah. but they know this is not a good thing. You know, they know that vaccine safety is, is well, an and, issue. And, and thank God, I mean, it's lawsuits. I mean, we're looking, yes. Bayer may not survive this. I they mean, may it, not. It, it looks to me as though if they can't figure out how to sort of lock this up into some sort of singular class action lawsuit, we're looking at Purdue Pharma is about to, you know, file Chapter 11 based on the opioid epidemic. We're watching major corporations mm -hmm. being brought down by people and yes. by the legal system and you know and I think that it shows also that there are multiple approaches to this there mm -hmm. have always been Bobby Kennedy's in there fighting mm -hmm. legally inside of courtrooms but if we don't bring this to the people if we don't get the people to rise up nothing really happens yeah well those lawsuits are yeah. happening mostly because of of consumers making uh, you know noise about it exactly and so right. we're, we're really excited about all of those angles the consumer the policy the, the legal you know aspect the media you know it's really important what you're doing so uh, just keep getting out there. We just urge everybody to just keep getting out there, speaking up. Uh, go to our website, momsacrossamerica.org. Support all of the great organizations. There's so many great organizations that are taking action now. You know, invest in them instead of another cell phone. Like yeah. really, we, yeah. need, we need to invest in the future now. It, we are at an urgent turning point in yeah. history right now. If we don't reverse climate change, if we don't, you know, get our food supply safe, if we don't get the pharmaceutical industry to clean its act up, uh, we're, we're, it's not looking good for the no. future. So no, we have a now lot is of the things time. that are really yeah. pressing the future existence of this species. Yes. Um, we have our work cut out for us. And I think the beauty is, I think we're going to see all of these changes in our time. We're either going to oh, win or happening. lose this in my lifetime. They're happening right you know, now. So yes. it's, it's on. It's, it's on. always <laughs> a pleasure to talk to you, Zen. Yes, Thank you, you for your courage um, and uh, continue the great work. Thank you. Okay. I will. Thank all you right. so much. All right. Very good.